Hey chemistry kids, this tutorial video is going over your ionic formulas homework assignment. This assignment is broken up into three parts. So part one, you are given the name and you are asked to write down the symbols and chemical formula. Part two, you are given the formula and asked to write the symbols and the name. And part three, you are given the uh, ion symbols and you are asked to write the formula and the name. So I'm going to demonstrate two examples from each part, and hopefully that'll be enough to get you going on the rest of it on your own. One thing you'll want to need, you want to have with you to do this assignment is your common ions list, which is located on the back side of your periodic table. This is where we're gonna get all of our answers for the names. And one note about this assignment is we are only going to use the stock naming system, which is the ion names with the Roman numerals. So with all the ion names that have two separate names, please only use the name with the Roman numerals. So that's what we'll be using for this assignment. So in part one, where we are given the compound name, we're gonna start with copper one sulfite. So right away we can see how the Roman numerals are used and we'll talk about what that means here. So to write the ion symbols, we're gonna take the name and we are going to find those ions on our ion list. Remember that the way names work is that the cation, which is the positive charged ion, is always first, and the anion, which is the negatively charged ion, is always the second one. So when you're looking up these ions on your list, you can look for the first part in the top half, which has your cations, and the second part in the bottom half where you have your anions. So you should do the ion symbols first in order to write your chemical formula. So first we're gonna look for copper one and we're gonna look in the cation section. So since it has the Roman numeral one, that's actually a clue um, that you wanna look in the positive one charge section. So we can see copper one has the formula Cu plus. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that one here. And the other symbol, we need to look up sulfite. That's our anion. So we're gonna check the anion section and make sure you find the right one. There's a few that look similar. So remember, we want sulfite. The ending is I-T-E. So when we find that on our list, you wanna make sure it's the exact right ion, not this one, which looks very similar, sulfate. So we wanna use sulfite. The formula is SO3 with a negative two charge. Make sure you write it correctly. So I'm gonna leave that right there so I can see SO subscript three, and then the charge is negative two, so you write two minus as the superscript. So those are our two symbols and we got those from the back of our periodic table. Now to write the formula, remember the whole goal of writing chemical formulas for ionic compounds is that we want to balance their charges. So we see that copper one has a charge of positive one and sulfate has a charge of negative two. So you wanna find the lowest number that both of those charges fit into. In this case, that number is going to be two. Sulfite already has a two and in order to make copper a two, we just need to multiply it by two. So however many of them you need, in this case we want two of them, we're gonna turn that into a subscript in the chemical formula. So I'm gonna say I want two coppers, so I'm gonna use a subscript two. That says I want two of this ion, which would give us positive two total. And then sulfite, we just need one of those. So I'll just write its formula, SO3. That is how you spell its name, so we definitely don't wanna change anything about it, particularly that subscript three needs to appear when we write the chemical formula. Now notice we don't have any charges here, and that's because they've canceled out. Once we make two coppers, now it's plus two, minus two, and the charges are eliminated. So that's the goal. All of your formulas should be neutral here. All right, so the next one I'm going to do is lead to nitrate. So we're gonna find those ions on our list. Remember, the first one is always the cation. So lead two, again, that Roman numeral kind of gives you a clue that it's gonna be in the positive two section. So we find lead two right here. Its formula is PB2 plus. So it has a positive two charge. And then nitrite will be in the anion section. 
So again, just make sure you find the exact right ion. Notice there are two names that are really similar, nitrate and nitrite. So we want nitrite. It's NO2 with a negative one charge. So make sure you write this correctly with your subscripts and the charges and the superscripts. So again, when we go to write our chemical formula, we want the charges to cancel out. That's the goal. So here on the cation side, we have a positive two charge. On the anion side, we have a negative one charge. So the smallest number both of those charges can fit into is two again. Pb is already at two. In order to make this charge a two, we need to multiply it by two. So Pb, since I only need one of those, I'll go ahead and write its symbol Pb. Now we need two of this ion nitrite. And be careful about this because it is a polyatomic ion, right? It, since it's polyatomic, that means it contains more than one atom. And if we need multiple of it, we need to put it into parentheses to make sure that the everything in the ion gets multiplied by two or however many you need. In this case, we need two. So we're gonna put parentheses and write the formula NO2, because remember we are not allowed to change anything about how it spells its name here. We're gonna put that in parentheses and then put the amount we need on the outside as a subscript. So we want two of those because we wanted this charge to become a negative two charge so that it cancels the positive two charge. So that's why we need the parentheses because it had a polyatomic. Notice here, we didn't need parentheses for two coppers because copper is monatomic. It just has one atom. So the two only affects the copper. Here, the two is affecting the nitrogen and the two oxygens in the formula. So that's section one. Let's do a couple from part two. So part two here, now we are given a formula and we wanna write the ion symbol and the name. So I'm gonna do a couple from this section, starting with ZnClO3,2. So to get our ion symbols, just like the name, the formula will always have the cation first and then the anion. So we're first gonna look for Zn in our cation section. And here it is. Sometimes it'll take you a while to find it. Here's Zn and it has a positive two charge. So I'm gonna write that for our, oh, sorry, I'm right here, Zn with a positive two charge. So that's my first one. And then the second one is ClO3. So I'm gonna look up this formula in the anion section. And be really careful about this because there's often ones that look really similar. So I can find um, a few that look similar. So there's ClO with a negative one charge, ClO3, ClO2, ClO4. So to double check, we want ClO3. So that's gonna be this one, right? ClO3 with a negative one charge. All right, and that's a polyatomic ion, right? Because it has chlorines and it has oxygen. So it has more than one atom. So when we name this one, it's actually gonna be really easy once we look up our ion symbols. So we know our first ion was zinc. So that's gonna be the first part of the name. The cation name always comes first. And then we put a space for the anion name and ClO3 minus. Again, make sure you're looking at the right one. The name of that ion is chlorate. So to get the names, you just put the two ion names together. So you have the cation name first, and then you have the anion name second with a space in between. So once you have found those ions, it's pretty easy to get the name. Notice there's a two in this formula here and recognize that that two is there because you needed two chlorates with a negative charge in order to balance the positive two charge of zinc. So the next one I'm gonna do is this SnNO3-4, okay? So first we're gonna look in the cation section to find Sn. Now this one's gonna be a little bit harder because if you notice when you're looking, and this is something you need to be careful of, there are actually two SNs that you can see on your ions list. 
there's an SN with a two plus charge and an SN with a four plus charge. So we don't know which one we have yet, and I'm gonna write down both of them while we figure this out. All right, and I'm gonna look up the anion to help us. So when you run into this problem where there are two different versions of the cation, use the anion. So we're gonna look up this NO3 in the anion section. And here it is, NO3, and it has a negative one charge. So I'm gonna write down that ion formula. And now we have to do some detective work, okay? If this ion has a negative one charge and we needed four of them, that tells us that this whole side of the formula because you multiplied that negative one charge by four, now this side of the formula is going to equal negative four, right? Because individually that ion had a negative one charge, that subscript four says we need to multiply it by four, so four times negative one gives us negative four. By understanding that, it tells us what this side needs to be, because remember, to have a chemical formula, the charges need to balance, they need to cancel out. So if the right side is negative four, that means this side has to be plus four. Your cation has to have a charge of positive four on this side. So by understanding that, we have determined that this is the correct version of tin that is in our formula here. If it were tin two, then this would be a two here. Okay, so we know that this is SN four plus from that. So then when we name it, again, that's the easy part. We look up the name for SN4+. And remember, we're only using the Roman numeral name. So it's tin with the Roman numeral four in parentheses. So the Roman numeral four is IV. So we're gonna write tin IV in parentheses. And notice there's no space here. And that's the first part, that's the cation name. And then the anion name, we look that up, and that is nitrate. So that's the second part of your name. So no, na no space between the metal and the Roman numeral, but then there is a space between the cation and the anion. So that's part two. On to part three, the final part here. Now we are given the ion symbols, we need to take those symbols, write a formula, and name it. So I'm gonna start with this one, Al3 plus NO2 minus, okay? Um, and actually, it's kinda easier to write the name first because we have those ions and we need to look them up anyway. So why don't we do the name first? So they list the cation first, positive charge first. So we see Al3 plus, that's aluminum. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the name first. So that's aluminum, that's our cation name. And then O2 minus, we look in the anion section. And these are easy to look up because they give you the charge. So if you know it's a two minus charge, look in the negative two section. And there it is, O2 minus, that is oxide. So the name will be aluminum oxide. We haven't written the formula yet, we need to do that now. So again, we need to look at the charges. That's the important thing, we have a positive three and a negative two. The goal is for the charges to cancel out. So the smallest number that both three and two will fit into is gonna be six. So what we need to do is think about what do we want to multiply this charge by to turn it into six. If we want three to be a six, we wanna multiply that by two. So that means, in other words, that we want two aluminums. So I'm gonna write Al with a two, subscript two, because I want two of those. And then O, how many of those do we want? Well, we want to make this two into a six so that it matches the AL. So to make the two a six, we need to multiply that by three. So to show that in the formula, you would say I want three oxygens by writing a subscript three. So this formula says we have two aluminums and three oxygens. 
And by doing that, these charges will turn into plus 6 and minus 6, and they will cancel out. And the last one that we're going to do is Cu2 plus and NO3 minus. So let's look those up first. Cu2 plus, we can see is copper with Roman numeral 2. Remember, we're using the Roman numeral names. So copper, no space. Roman numeral 2 is II. And then NO3 minus, this is a polyatomic ion. We've seen it before, this one, nitrate. So we're going to write the formula for copper 2 nitrate next. So again, the goal here is to make the charges balance. We have a positive 2 charge on the copper and a negative 1 charge on the nitrate. Be careful, that 3 is a subscript. It's telling you how many oxygens. It's not the charge. The charge is just negative, which means negative 1. So if we have positive 2 and negative 1, the smallest number they can both fit into is 2. This one's already a 2, so we're just going to keep that the same. We don't need extra of that. We just need one copper with a positive 2 charge. But in order to make this one have a 2, we need to multiply it by 2. So to do that, since it's a polyatomic ion, remember polyatomic means it has more than one atom, we need to put the whole formula for the ion nitrate in parentheses because we are not allowed to change anything about its name. NO3 is its name. So we'll put that in parentheses. And we said we needed two of those. So we'll put a two outside of the parentheses to signify that we need two of this polyatomic ion. So the two is affecting the N and the O. And now our charges will balance because we would have plus two minus two because it's two times negative one. Okay, so those are two problems from each section of that assignment. Hopefully that's enough to get you started, and good luck with the rest of your homework.